Hey, uh, we are uh, going to do a conversion of a Catamount Fury. And uh, before we do that, I just want to kind of introduce the weapon here. I just got this coming out of the box. Uh, this is a Catamount Fury 1, and they also make a, a Fury 2. But this is, this is the Model 1, the Fury 1. And it comes uh, packaged here, and uh, they give you five magazines, five five-round magazines. And it comes with a cleaning, a uh, couple cleaning rods and a cleaning brush. And it also comes with three chokes. So again, this is the Catamount Fury 1. And we're going to show you how to do a basic conversion on this weapon. As you can see, it is very similar to the Russian-made um, Sega and Vepper shotguns, which Carolina Shooter Supply uh, supplies conversion kits for those weapons. And now we've got conversion kits for the Catamount Fury. So I'm going to walk you through how to break this gun down first, uh, and then we'll uh, build it back up with a pistol grip, a new trigger guard, new fire control equipment, and we're going to change out the buttstock. Okay, um, we're basically going to tear this gun down. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is remove the buttstock. But first, let me just get some of this safety, safety flag out of that. I'm going to put this in a vise. It's, it's good to have a nice rubber, rubberized um, uh, clamps here so that you don't damage uh, or scratch your receiver. And I'm just going to get this thing uh, tightly in the vise here, just like that. Leah Phillips said, um, screwdriver, and I'm going to loosen these little screws in here. Um, unless you've got that loose, it comes right off. It's really pretty simple. As you can see, it just it just comes right off there. So, um, so as you can see, I've got the camera um, uh, looking down into the buttstock, and there's a, uh, a flathead screw about eight inches deep in there that um, you just need to get a screwdriver on that and, and, and take it off. Pretty, pretty easy to do, but I just wanted to show you um, what that screw looked like. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove the buttstock now. Okay. Um, just to remove this, get a screwdriver on the nut in there on the screw. And, uh, as you can see, it's pretty easy to take that screw off. screw is going into the receiver and there's a, a nut in there that will show you as soon as we get this thing off. You can see it just comes right off. Okay, we're just going to continue to uh, to do the basic tear down. We're going to open the dust cover, which is a pretty simple operation. You're just pushing on this spring. Um, and then we're going to remove the recoil assembly which it just kind of pulls right out just like that. The next thing you want to do is take the bolt and carrier out and to do that you're just going to you just basically slide it back and lift it right out. Okay, um, the next step in the teardown is uh, we're going to remove the safety which is pretty easy. The safety is just um, this lever right here and to remove this basically just pull it up safety comes straight up and then you just basically slide it out just like that very similar to an AK-47 uh, style safety mechanism and we are going to reuse this so we'll put that over here okay the next thing we're going to do is um, basically take this hammer spring um, which has these feet on it that connect to the trigger actually to the disconnector and we're going to basically lift lift these up with the needle nose pliers and just pull these up got to get these out of the way basically so just like in our Sega videos you just want to be able to tie this off somehow I've got just a little plastic tie here that I'm going to use
tie that off. Okay, so you basically have got that spring now secured, and that's going to allow us to, to remove um, remove the trigger and the disconnect. Okay, before I um, remove the rest of this, I just wanted to point out um, the next thing we're going to do is basically remove this long spring here. Um, all of these axis pins that are, that are going through the receiver have a little groove in them and those axis pins are being held in place by this pin. And this pin comes all the way from the hammer which is held in by an axis pin here all the way back to the trigger which is in the rearmost um, position of the receiver back here. There's, a, there's one, two, three, four pins basically holding all the fire control group in place. Um, the, and these axis pins are right here and there's this shepherd's crook is what I call it for the AK. Um, it's this pin here and we're basically going to cut. Okay, um, we basically have to get something in here to pull this away from the receiver and so I'm using a, an aw here and uh, just need to pull that away so you can get a wire cutter down in here which isn't the easiest thing to do. And it, Sorry, my hands are kind of blocking the view, but that's the only way to get this down in here. Okay, I've basically gotten that wire piece cut. And uh, just pull it out with a, with a needle nose, and you can see there one end of it. So here's the, here's the pin I was talking about. It's basically just a straight pin that was wrapped down on all of those axis pins, basically a spring. Okay, um, and all we're really going to do now is just remove these axis pins. So starting with the hammer here, just take that and you can see the groove in there that I was talking about. Um, we're not going to reuse these. Um, but then we just, out comes the hammer which is not going to be reused. Um, the rest of these can be a little trickier. Okay, and then all we need to do next is just remove the rest of these pins. That one just comes out very easily. And each one of these pins is holding in a piece of the fire control group. So that pin comes out. And there's your disconnector. And your spring. And then the trigger. All right, and this last pin is just right here. It just comes out. So here's the here's the fire control group basically. Um, the hammer, disconnector, this little rocker arm, and a trigger, and the pin that was holding these four axis pins in place. Um, all this is going to be, and the hammer, of course, um, all of this we're going to be, uh, we're not going to be reusing any of this. So, Okay, the last, last thing we're going to do here is we are going to remove the trigger guard. And to do that, we've got to basically drill these, um, r remove these rivets. The best way to get this started is to take an awe Just make a spot on the top of that so you can get the drill started. And once you get the drill started, you just I've pretty much got that one riveted out, the rivet taken out there, and I'm just gonna put a punch on it. And that's pretty much done with that one. And again, it's best if you start by making a nice score on the top of that rivet so that you can and even flatten it out a little bit with a punch. Okay. Trying to keep the drill 
on the top of this rivet. It's not easy, but you really just got to be patient with it and just remove the head of that. Rivet. Okay, again, once you've got most of the, the head of that thing, um, the rivet, uh, removed, just take a punch, put it right on there, and that didn't take much at all. It just pushed, pushed it right out, and you can see the trigger guard there. Okay, and there's one more to go under here. We're going to have to turn the gun over for that. Okay, I've turned the, the gun over. We're looking at the bottom of the receiver here, and you can see the trigger guard and the plate. These are the two rivets we've popped out. And the last thing to do here is just a little tack weld. So to get this, I'm going to use a chisel and a hammer. Basically, you just want to pick that trigger, almost bend it and tear it off. But I'm going to put the chisel right there and just get right here. And that's it. So here's the trigger guard and the plate. And we're not going to reuse that, so I just wanted to show it to you. But basically here, now let me just um, show you what we've got here. Um, underneath that plate is a, is a forward trigger hole, which is where um, our new trigger is going to sit. The original trigger was back here, and this is where your pistol grip is going to be. And we're going to have a trigger here, and the hammer is basically going to stay where it was. So the next thing we're going to have to do... Um, is basically make this hole a little bit bigger because the tap code...